What's up everybody, how you doing? Ryan Apton here. ABC is the snowboarding. We are going with the letter L. L is gonna be for landings. How many of you guys follow Tommy Bennett? Let me know in the comments. Tommy Bennett's landings, oh my gosh. If you're watching his videos, he's always using his knees excessively. And the benefits of this, even if you're not jumping, even on some of my buttering things, even on just normal terrain, you have like this motion that is a gentle, finesseful pressure down versus an abrupt landing. And that abrupt landing on an edge can cause the edge to jounce and cause easy falls. So, uh, yeah, could I tape you on some of your landings? And then let's kick out, have you kick out some thoughts on landings too. I'm so down. Let's do it. Yeah. And if you're not following Tommy, boom, he's got amazing tutorials, high level snowboarding and instructional experience with like explaining and breaking down things. So definitely give his channel a follow right now. Woo! Ah, the Nice line, Mr. Bennett. All right, so as you can see, he was absorbing tons of landings, especially as the, he progresses to the bigger jumps, really using those knees and just squatting it out until the board's in the snow perfectly and then riding away. Uh, give us some thoughts about landings. Yeah, so he was talking about big jumps or even small jumps. Essentially what you wanna do is you want your shoulders, hips, and your knees to be parallel with the train. Now let's say the landing's at 30 degrees. You want your shoulders, hips, and board to be 30 degrees to match that. Now, the reason why it's super important is if I'm able to be parallel, it allows my body to absorb with both of my feet at the same time. A lot of times as snowboarders, we land in the back seat. Now imagine we, if we had like 500 pounds of pressure landing on one foot, it could be really hard, but if we distribute that between both of our feet, then we have a higher chance of actually landing a trick. And that's really what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to land tricks, look good, feel good. Yep. I used to, when I was road park in Minnesota all night, every night after school, I used to literally have a uh, CD player Kenwood, it was expensive as hell, and it had 10 second anti-skip technology. But if I had hard landings, abrupt landings, the CD player would skip, and that, I hated that. So that was my cue, oh, I gotta absorb this gent more gently. And uh, it's kind of a longevity thing. If you are riding park all day and doing it right, you can have a pretty nice time unless you're overshooting or knuckling jumps and still have your knees feel all right. But if you're having those abrupt, hard, rigid landings and not using the knees, it's just gonna feel like dog shit. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. Hey, even on buttering things, check this out. I'll have Tommy tape me on a uh, little buttering thing and watch how I absorb even just that. But it also even applies to turns. Maybe you hit a little weird fluctuation or maybe there's some bumps on the run and you absorb certain parts with the knees and you press on other parts with the knees. So using those knees excessively and yeah, that's, like would look at that skier way up there. Boom, he is using his knees massively for those high edge angle turns. Woo! Oh, almost oh. coming too close to someone, but uh, yeah, don't ski and snowboard too close to people. But uh, very nice turns he was making. That window.
All right, there's your quick little ABCs of the day landings. Tommy, thank you so much for joining me. Go check out his channel, but boom, you make those landings using the knees excessively and you can make them nice and gentle and you'll feel good throughout the whole day snowboarding versus, and you're much less likely to fall too. So any last thoughts on landings? That's it. If you land with both knees, you're gonna help save your knees. You're gonna have a sick day. And I love your analogy about the Walkman. Something I like to say is imagine your leg landing on eggs you don't want to crush all the shells, so be nice and gentle. Another good cue is if it's nice and quiet, that's a good indication that you've absorbed it. If it's super, then you're probably not absorbing it as well as you could. Absolutely, on both of those points. So yeah, so many good uh, thoughts on that. Thank you so much for joining me, Tommy. Thank you so much for watching. Happy shredding. Go check out his channel. Happy shredding. And kapla! Oh.